you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the com. Welcome to the Chris Voss Show, coming at you live from the Chris Voss Show studios. Welcome to the show, my family and friends. Ah, uh, you can't have it without the Iron Lady to sing it, folks. Welcome. Be sure to refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. You know the drill. Go to goodreads.com forward slash Chris Voss or else facebook.com at chrisvoss.facebook.com or else. <laughs> Why am I threading my audience right now? It's been 16 years. We'll do what we want here. Anyway, guys, we have an amazing young man on the show today. He's a returning guest. He's been here once before. And the title of his book that he has out, we'll be talking about today, How It All Ends, November 20th, 2023. It came out. Dr. Richard Ruling is with us today. We're going to be talking about his insights and thoughts and what he feels is going on in the world and maybe how you can avoid some of the <coughs> fallout that's going to happen. Richard is a retired physician who taught health science at Loma Linda University. He sees medical care as a leading cause of illness and death due to adverse drug reactions and has info he can share on the COVID shot that would be of interest to the National Institutes of Health if asked. His focus in retirement has been current events and biblical prophecy. He predicted the war in Iraq before 9-11 based on Christ saying to understand Daniel's prophecy. His vision, the time of the end, was a ram-goat conflict with ram horns representing Medes and per- Persians, Persians that are now in Iraq and Iran. Since Hamas initiated the war with Israel, sponsored by Iran, that also attacked Israel this year, April and recently, he believes we will see biblical end times begin next spring for additional reasons he can explain. Welcome to the show, Richard. How are you? Oh, it's so good to be with you. Appreciate this, Chris, and wish God bless you for this opportunity that I hope everybody can understand. We got a lot to cover. <laughs> Thank- I need all the help I can get. Just make sure that you give us, you know, the good teasers out because we want people to buy your book. Okay. Shall I go ahead? Yes, please. Give us a, the, give us a dot .com. I'm sorry. My bad. I threw that in there and got off course. G- give us a dot .com where people can find you on the interweb and get to know more about you. And I think you have a special deal on the book as well. Yes. Three words everybody wants. Health, happiness, and destiny.com. The and is spelled out. Uh, and it has bo- uh, several of the books. Uh, uh, they're audio as well as uh, uh, digital copy. And uh, you, you can see them there at uh, health. Is I'm saying uh, to me, this is a, a, a huge concept that physical health comes from what we put in our mouth largely. Okay, mental health is happiness. If we if we have good inputs to our mind and it's not all fiction like exciting sex and crime and all that, we can live better, more normal lives and be happy with obedience to natural laws, just like with physical laws, we get health. And then destiny comes from appreciation of the creator and the fact that he's given us life and et cetera. So spiritual laws, obedience to those laws are wise choices. And we can get all of those things without money necessarily. So Hmm. thank you. Give us a 30,000 depth of what's in your new book. How It All Ends is a look that starts with Christ's statement. When he was asked about the end of the world, he said to understand the book of Daniel. And in Daniel's eighth chapter, there is a vision at the time of the end, which I have actually in the camera here, if you like. It's a ram and a goat conflict, which the ram is pushing from the Middle East, and, that, and Muslims actually have a ram sacrifice as their second holiest day of the year because Ishmael was sur- survived or was spared by Abraham sacrificing a ram instead of sacrificing Ishmael, they think. Mm. But really, it was Isaac, the Bible. And the, what's unfolding reveals the true holy book is the Bible because Israel is being spared in spite of the Medes and Persians in, in verse 20, the horns on the ram, uh, animals fight with their horns, and the, the militant part of the ram, Medes and Persians, are, were against Israel, but Saddam is gone, and Israel has survived. And I believe that Iran, which is Persia, has sponsored Hamas a, a year ago, and it's escalating with Hamas, and this year, 
Iran got into the picture with what they, you know, missiles and drones sent to Israel. But I believe by next spring, we will see a flagrant outright prophecy of Zechariah 14. It says the day of the Lord comes, which is the end time period, and nations will be gathered against Jerusalem, houses rifled, women ravished, half the city goes into captivity. And uh, mm-hmm. I believe they will, they, they, they get the upper hand for a short time, and they will probably celebrate their mosque and Quran, which says Allah has no son. And this mm-hmm. is my speculation that when they celebrate that, I want to believe it's at that instant, it says the Lord will roar from Jerusalem, the heavens and earth will shake, and they will flee, okay, out Mm -hmm. of there. Because they'll be at the epicenter of perhaps the biggest earthquake this world has seen. And And I believe it will impact the world. Everybody will know it's a time of judgment. There's a verse in Amos 3, 7 and 8 that God won't do anything without revealing it. And the next verse says, the lion has roared, who will not fear? This is the lion of Judah in Revelation 5, 5. It's Christ who roars from Jerusalem because the people that are there don't believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Okay. (laughs) That was, you know, and, and so instead of believing John 316, they get Joel 316 that says the Lord will roar heavens and earth shake. That's my way of hook, mental hook of remembering those verses. Oh, I get the Joel Epstein or the Joel What's that guy's name? The text anyway. I'm just doing jokes. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, right now the the what's going on in Israel and Lebanon and uh, Iran with Hezbollah. They seem to be they seem to be doing quite a job on on Lebanon, taking out pff, everything there. Thing, same thing with Hamas. They've killed a couple of Hamas leaders now. Do you, what do you think is going to happen? With where they're at, is is Israel going to start being on the back foot somehow? I happen to have here, hold on, a somewhere, a news note. My, can't believe that I lost it somewhere. Mm-hmm. It, it, I'll, I'll just tell you about it. It's sure. 57 Muslim nations urged by President of Turkey, Erdogan, to siege Israel. 57. Mm-hmm. Israel is badly outnumbered that way, and I believe that basically they will they will succumb to that type of pressure. If it's not nuclear, they, they'll be surrounding it. And basically, Christ said in Luke twenty one twenty that when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, you know its desolation is nigh. Well, uh, it's not only about them. I think Jerusalem represents God's people everywhere. And I believe when we see that, it's a heads up because we're approaching a time of judgment worldwide with big trouble. And that earthquake will be part of, of bringing it. I did find what I was looking for. Here it is. This is a a headline that shows 57 Muslim nations urged to siege Israel. And that's... What's the date on that? Actually, to be truthful, it's several years ago, but it's, it's, we're getting there. You know, this is prophecy in part because God foretold it in Zechariah 14 that, that nations will be gathered against Jerusalem. And they've been talking about it for a while, but I believe they're going to do it. There was a Iran nuclear treaty in 2015, along with a cluster of other signs. And I believe the 10 year from 2015 to 2025, Arabic numbers are tens, okay? Mm -hmm. We thank them for, instead of working with Roman numerals, which would be very difficult to do math with, we we have the, the, you know, 10 numbers to 10, and then we start over again with 10 plus one is 11 and so on. I I, I appreciate their mind on the math, but I think uh, 10 years, we're coming to a time. In fact, Joseph was probably in prison for three years before he said there's gonna be seven good years and then seven bad. So we're coming Mm -hmm. to the seven bad basically next spring oh boy this might not work out well then should i what 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 plan should i should is there any companies i need to invest in or is there anything i'm there not anything talking I about i i i'm more interested in in believing that martial law will be declared after a major earthquake and it could include the new madrid fault in the mississippi dividing this country etc hmm. some people see, see that as a, a possibility i see definitely the Southern California area as a disaster, because you mentioned my background as a physician. I happen to teach health in this National Geographic cover story, Secrets of Living Longer. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's about my community and and school. My school was, by the way, is this article says they're the only blue zone in North America, but NIH, National Institutes of Health, gave my school $40 million grant 
for a study to learn why the community lives seven to 10 years longer than other non-smoking groups. And really, it, it, I could have saved them some money to talk with me. <laughs> this Time Magazine, date 1990, shows my favorite author, who was the founder of Loma Linda, okay? And she wrote so accurately, the next page on this thing shows that she was 100 years ahead of her time, specifically on tobacco. She said in 1864 that tobacco was a, a, a most malignant poison. Mm -hmm. 100 years before the Surgeon General in 1964 said that the malignant tumors or lung cancer comes from tobacco. See? Oh, wow. So she called, she called it a malignant poison, and he said malignant tumors, lung cancer, from, from it, you know, 100 years later. Dr. Clive McKay of Cornell University reviewed her nutritional writings and summarized a lengthy review by saying that he was amazed that she didn't include the fads and fallacies of her day, and she w was the no better overall guide available today in nutrition. I think mm -hmm. it's still true. We have so many fad diets, this, that, and the other, and pretty soon that fad is gone and we're on to something else. I, I just saw another one recently. But I'm, you called me a young man, but I'm 83 and in great health. What? Uh, be, yeah, I'm 83, believe it or not. <laughs> I was alive in the womb 83 years ago, okay, okay. by the way. And, and, and I, for that reason, I, I favor, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to lose your listeners, but I believe Christians have a duty to vote in favor of wombs and no abortions. And if you study that, it, one candidate is very radical on et cetera. Anyway, that's going back to the, what we were talking yeah. about before. Hey, yeah. but one, one more thing I want to add about the founder of Loma Linda. This is Ellen White, mm -hmm. and she, she did not want drugs taught at her medical school. She wanted it to train missionaries in natural remedies, and they hijacked her school. Stupid administrators that really didn't know what she knew. They wanted to get AMA accreditation, and they, they, uh, AMA said, "Well, if you treat pharmacology, you you can have accreditation." So they thought that'd be a great idea. But today, the medical literature proves that that adverse drug reactions are a leading cause of death. You never hear about it because the CDC is lying to us. Their list has never included medical care. Even though the medical journal, like people sometimes quote the JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, in tax day, April 15, 1998, the study was 106,000 deaths in hospitals under mm. monitor conditions from deaths from drugs that were properly prescribed and administered. It wasn't malpractice and it wasn't an overdose, but people sometimes react. And I can give you an example that really hits home to me because my former wife had a bladder infection and she didn't know what to do after taking cranberry juice and drinking a lot of water and uva ursi and herb. She went to her doctor and he got a, she got a prescription for a, a drug that I had prescribed but wasn't my favorite at all. And she was in three days over it. She didn't need the, the medication any longer. She didn't overdose, but months later had a, a, a rash under her skin that looked bad. And I said, you ought to get a blood test. So she went to her doctor and the next morning he called urgently referring her to a hematologist, he said she has no platelets in her blood. Oh, and the goodness. hematologist put her in the hospital and did a bone marrow, no platelets in the bone marrow. Hmm. He took out her spleen, still no better. He treated her with transfusions and high steroids until she died of a stroke oh, from man. an antibiotic she took for three days as, as prescribed. Wow. And I am remarried to a woman whose former husband died from the same antibiotic Cipro it was actually, and it's not my favorite. I've talked to people that have gotten sick and, and from it actually, but, and it's, it's, unless you get a class action suit, you can't sue the government or, or you know, the, the Supreme Court gave them a free pass. But, and I'm saying that, that CDC never reports these things. Their top ca cause of death, I, I told you in 1998 was the fourth, it said it, in the medical literature, it said it's the fourth to sixth leading cause of death. Medical care didn't make the list then. It didn't make it again two years later when the Western Journal reported 199,000 from outpatients outside them. Mm. So, so bad situation. And then a five year, I, I'm sorry, in 19, uh, in 2005, the, a, a seven year study ended and they said that the death rate and, and adverse drug reaction that made people sick was 2.6 and 2.7 more. It increased 2.7 fold so that if you multiply 305,000 deaths 
from inside and outside the hospital, my mask gets 824,000 and medical care is number one. And I, I went through the U.S. Congress or Senate offices with the literature to prove it until one senator said, you're wasting your time. They own us. Speaking of the donations the drug companies make to their reelection. And we don't hear about it in the news. Uh, the, the news is sponsored by the drug companies. You know, they don't they don't like to report medical stuff. They just, you know, it's on the label. FDA says you have to do the label. But bottom line, we're if we can live without drugs, we're better off. And I've had only one prescription drug in my life since teenage, and I'm living well at 83. 83 years old. You ever taken the penicillin or anything like that? When I was a kid, I was sickly fairly often, and every other winter, I'd get a penicillin shot from my dad, who was a doctor. And so, yeah, penicillin, but not since childhood. And mm. in teenage, I switched my diet to become a vegetarian. And I, I tend to be a vegan for the most part, married to a wife that doesn't can't do dairy product, et cetera. Yeah. And so, anyway. I'm in that same boat with you. I, I mean, me and lactose do not get along. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can, understand. I can okay. turn, I'll, I go nuclear if I get lactose. <laughs> in like, there's a nuclear yeah. reaction. It's, Chernob it's Chernobyl all over yeah. again. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I, I buy some. I bought some raw milk from a, from an old farm that has cows that I think they're called A1 cows or A2 yeah. cows. But basically, you can there are cows out there that are the original cows before the. Evidently, the thing I guess some, some the ha thing that happened to the cows is they had some sort of DNA t diversion, uh -huh. and they, their DNA changed somehow as as they got modernized in the modern world, and so they suddenly developed this lactose crap. And so, if you find the old cows, the original cows that don't have it, or the ones that have been bred from it, you can you can drink milk without lactose. It's really nice too. But you're specialized in that area, and you know more than I do about it, really. But I wanted to way if you do uh, testing. Yeah. <laughs> I, Lots of nuclear I, testing. <laughs> right. I want to finish up with my favorite author, though, who, after mm -hmm. her school was hijacked and taken, and she said no twice, but she had a vision of an earthquake at Loma Linda. And she, her description was that buildings, great and small, were falling to the ground. Many lives were blotted out. It seemed that the forbearance of God was exhausted and that Judgment Day had come. And she, in another area, another source, said that she named L.A., Pasadena, San Bernardino, Riverside, and Loma Linda total destruction nearly. In my opinion, I'm serious. I, I, I would not want to live in L.A. next springtime. If you see Muslims taking Jerusalem... I think people, first of all, Christ said, no man knows the day or hour, but as the days of Noah. That's how he finished it. And in Noah's time, the flood came with Passover timing, but in the second spring month. It was a provision for contact with a dead body because Noah buried his grandfather, whose name meant when he dies, it will come. Methuselah, okay. He, he, died, he lived to be the oldest man in history in the world, according to the Bible. But the, there was another reason, though, also, and I call it a 9-11 warning by Christ. Actually, it's based on the book of Numbers, chapter 9, verse 11. If, if Israelites took a long journey and couldn't get back in time for Passover, they were not excused because Passover represented judgment, and they, they were to keep it a month later if they had a long journey, couldn't get back. And that's how Christ ended his, his parable of the ten virgins. Now, a lot of Christians know about the story of the ten virgins, and five got to the wedding too late. The wise got in, but he, Christ said, watch, which, by the way, is a clue for Passover. It was the only night in the year that they were supposed to be awake. And as Christ mm -hmm. asked his disciples, watch and pray with me. It, that was the eve of Passover after they had the Last Supper. The communion, we recognize it as communion. Uh, but they fell asleep. And, and in my opinion, they lost more than, they, uh, than we think about. Or, and this is my speculation. But you remember, he had announced that the kingdom of God is at hand. And his disciples came to him, James and John. They wanted to be on the left and right. And he said, can you drink of the cup that I drink of? And they said, yeah. He gives it to them last night. And everything is fine for a couple hours, but when they go out to the garden to pray, and he says, watch and pray with me, he comes back later, an hour, and he says, what? Could you not watch it with me one hour? They were asleep. Mm -hmm. And my point is that, that Christ was strengthened by prayer to go through what he went through, and if they had been strengthened, instead of running that night when the Romans came with the Jews, 
he sh he the, his disciples should have said, hey, we're going to trial with you. And when they went to trial, when the Jews accused Christ of going to tear down the temple and build it again in three days, they could have said, no, he's talking about his body. Come out Sunday morning. You'll see. If they had said that, and they themselves would have been witnesses, along with Nicodemus and maybe a few others, the Jews could not have lied. Hmm. And Pentecost could have been the whole nation in repentance. Sorry for what they'd done, you know, but happy that he, he came out. And the kingdom could have been established then with the whole nation in repentance. But instead, it was just 120 people in an upper room praying, and they had to hide from the Jews or, or get punished or something. It didn't happen, you know. But the, the world would be so much better today, in my opinion, if God's kingdom, Christ's kingdom, could have been established then with a Christianic, they, we call it Messianic Jews now. You know? mm. In other words, they, they believe in the Savior, and I believe that's who God wants his kingdom made up in the, in the end time, not the group that's in Jerusalem now. So that mm -hmm. when the Muslims come and, and chase people out, it, it's clearing the way for a, a different scenario, basically. Mm. Wow. That's, that's pretty interesting. So in your book, what, what are some other teachings things are going to find that people are going to find in there? It, it does have some good health information, basically. And they get a, a free video if they go to my website that has a, a health happiness and destiny dot com, they get a, a free download. And by the way, the digital is just two dollars and ninety five cents, I believe. So mm. it's 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 cheap and not it's not going to break anybody. And why not? The, the 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 video alone, the link is worth thousands of dollars if people have diabetes and they take diabetic drugs or cholesterol drugs or blood pressure drugs, things like that. I'm anti-drug, I'm pharmaceutical because I believe if we eat right, we shouldn't need it. And there are half a dozen things that people do to eat that can raise their blood pressure, et cetera. Anyway, that's, that's it in a nutshell. The, the, you know, if you eat right, that makes all the difference in the world. I've seen that movie, you know, and, and I, I drank hard for a good 20 years of vodka. And then I became vegan like you did, vegan-ish. I have some variation, I guess, that, you know, there's 500 variations of veganism, I guess. <laughs> I get yelled at anytime I quote something. So I call it vegan-ish. And, you know, there's, there's all sorts of, I, there's so many variations, I'm not even sure why. Anyway, but I don't have a joke for that. But yeah, it, learning to eat right, man, it's repaired all my health. I wasn't unhealthy before, but I definitely must have been somewhat unhealthy given <laughs> what I was drinking. But uh, you know, now I I feel great. My my blood tests and all that stuff come back saying I'm awesome. I'm not dead yet, evidently. So there's still time. Good. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it can do that. As we go out, you you've got a lot of books that you have written. Do you want to plug some of those books? Uh, let me before going out. Let me just share a perspective. I am first of all, I see that God says He declares the end from the beginning, which means He makes it known. And I see in the book of beginnings that He made known medical care in the last chapter of Genesis. That's the book of beginnings, Genesis. Hmm. And when Joseph's father whose name was Jacob, changed to Israel. When Israel died, Joseph asked the physicians to embalm his father. This tells me that they must be losing so many patients in their care that they also do the embalming, you know. And all five references to physicians in the Bible, King James, are negative. Christ said uh, that a woman with an issue of blood spent all her money on physicians. This is the plural of physicians. The, the plural form of the word, all five references are negative. She, sp she spent all her money and was no better. And I'm seeing that more details, sometimes we think we're scientific today. In John 5th chapter, there's a pool of Bethesda and a man that was lame from, for 38 years laying around that pool. The, the myth was that if an angel would trouble the waters and the first person in would get healed. That's a myth that we also have today. And we have a pool of Bethesda today. Bethesda, Maryland is the home of NIH, National Institutes of Health. And our tax dollars are pooled there to fund drug research. And it's a myth that they're going to cure you of cancer, okay? They're really not even looking for a, a cure for cancer. They want treatment centers so you can go there and as long as you're alive, pay for a treatment and get it, you know, they, they're really not looking for a cure. But I believe the diet and is, is an excellent thing. And the, the video people get 
when they get my book, How It All Ends, shows a woman with breast cancer that had spread, mm. but she beat it with diet. Okay, in, as described in the in the thing. And to me, if you got people that want their money's worth, buy the How It All Ends and and click the link at a certain point. Which, by the way, will also warn you about the shot. If you've had that for you know what, I don't know if we get off the air for that, but community guidelines kill me when they don't want medical information on a, a certain shot for a certain problem that's been in history recently. So okay. anyway. Give us your .coms one more time as we go out. Okay. It's health, happiness, and destiny.com. And I thank you very much. God bless you. And hey, be serious. The earthquake is going to be serious next spring if you see the Jerusalem compass with armies. To figure out when Passover is, it's really the eve of May 10, 12 rather. May 12 is Friday night and Saturday. Watch and pray, and, and that way it, it ties in with the wedding parable of Luke. And we can be ruler over all that he has since my name is ruling. I wanted to understand it. And more, more on that. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to the show, Richard. We really, really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, to our yes. audience, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, and all this crazy place on the internet. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. And that's